In today's show, we're gonna talk about the Power Apps print function. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at some of its awesomeness, some of the little nuances of it, and also talk about how it compares to printing uh, via PDF, and then also just a little bit around like adapting to current stuff. So just kind of give you guys an overview of not only how it works, but how I'm starting to apply it to some of our customer apps. Should be fun, should be fast. But first, here's our intro. Hi, my name is Shane Young with Power Apps 911. Those guys. And today, we're going to about Power Apps Print. The idea here is Microsoft finally gave us this print function, but depending on what you were expecting or hoping for, it may or may not be what you wanted. Because basically all that is in the day is takes whatever the screen is, so kind of think of like it print screens, and then it sends that into the uh, browser's printer. So what we're going to do is we're going to talk about what works, what doesn't, uh, you know, just little features, little nuances, and how to apply it to some of my existing apps and just kind of break it all down because I want to make sure you guys have your heads wrapped around how to use this. I'm sure you have lots of questions. And don't worry, we'll also talk a little bit about printing to uh, PDF the way we've always done because I think that's, for a lot of cases, especially at the customer apps that are in my head right now, that's a lot of what we're going to see is still required. So this function kind of moves us forward but might not do all the things we want. But maybe it does. I don't know. Let's just switch over to the demo and take a look. Let's start with just taking an existing one. So this is a calendar I spent a few, the last three videos on, I had a bunch of time with. And so I threw print on it today just so you get a quick little view of how this works before we start talking about how it works. So here's my lovely little calendar. Like, yay, I love my calendar. You know, maybe we wanna jump over here. We're gonna say, I wanna hit print, so I add this little icon. And so after a few seconds, you can see that what it did was it just opened up my browser. In this case, I'm using the new Chromium-based Edge, or Credge, as I like to call it, because I got rid of Chrome for this. I really liked this browser like a year ago. Anyway, and so it dropped me in here, and it's like, hey, I can save this off as PDF for you. And then, bamo whammo, right? You've got a screenshot. Now, we're gonna see some of the things that don't exactly behave the way you want, but overall, I'm like, cool. All I wanted was a print out of this calendar. Boom, there it is. I can print in portrait, landscape, which is really just making a PDF. Interestingly enough, right, with the free PDF conversion process we've been using for the last few years, there was no way to do landscape. So, hey, we can make PDFs landscape now. So that's kind of exciting. Um, also keep in mind that this is gonna show you, so in this case it's save as PDF, but it would show you all the actual printers available to my browser. So like, you know, we have a laser printer upstairs. And so it would show you that printer and stuff, you know. I don't know, there's probably some security hack if I show you my printers. I'm not gonna show you my printers, but you get the idea. We have the ability to print to PDF or print to a physical printer. Woohoo! So that is how this all works. Uh, but that's really it, right? There's no settings, there's no controls. Um, we're gonna talk a little bit about, I mean, there's the browser printer controls, but there's not um, any settings in the actual uh, function. Okay, so let's exit out of that. Now, before we dive into that too much, what I thought I'd do is go over here to this other app. So back to my lovely little tabs app. And so let's look at printing this one. So how would we print this app that we built in a previous video? And I'll put a link somewhere if you're curious how this app works. But so what I would do is we're going to insert a icon. Now, you might have noticed this week they also released like double or triple the amount of icons we used to have. And there's a lot in here. If we scroll long enough, I can find the print icon. But what I'm trying to get myself into the habit of doing is just adding one. So just throw the add one literally. I'm gonna drag it over here. And then right here on the right, we can say, hey, icon add. And if we search, we can just type in print. And we can see that, oh, look, there's a printer object and there is a 3D printing one. Well, we're just regular printing that. Very cool. And I'm gonna set the color to white. And so like, yay, it works. Now, it's just a picture. It doesn't do anything magically. So if we want it to print, what we're going to do is we're going to go up here to the on select of that option and we're going to type in print, open and close parentheses. That's it, right? There's no parameters. If we open this up, you notice here it just immediately closes it. So there's no optional things we can pass to it. You know, and we might also throw a dot on the end. There's no additional properties or anything. It's just literally print. And this just invokes your browser print. Now, real important point here. I say invoke your browser print. Print currently does not work on mobile. So if you wanted to print from a mobile device, you can't, right? This only works within your uh, browser. So Chrome and, you know, or Chrome or Chrome or Edge or Safari or whatever you're printing from. They also said that there's some issues if you're using the old version of Edge or Internet Explorer, it might not work perfectly. So keep that in mind. Hopefully you're not using either of those terrible browsers, but you might be. So now if we do this, right, we've just added a little icon. We put print here. So we hit play. 
We're going to say print. And now here you're going to see a couple of things that you need to keep in mind. Remember I told you the way to think about this is it's a screenshot. So for example, my gallery has a lot more records. It doesn't show me the rest of the gallery stuff. My form over here had more data. It doesn't show it, um, you know, the things that go down. It's also not very printer friendly, right? Because it's an input form at this point. So you're going to have to think about those things just a little bit as you're going through this process. Also notice up here the print icon shows up. Well, let's fix that first. I don't like that. So we're going to go up here and cancel. Go back in here. And you do have to be in the full preview, this preview to get print to work. If I pr hold down the Alt key and press print, it just yells at me. Okay. All right. So one of the neat things here I did find is if you go down to the visible, um, so right now the, it's visible is true, which makes sense. We want it to show up. But what if you didn't want it to be part of your print? Or what if you didn't want something else to show up when they were printing? Well, what you can do is that for your screen, so in this case, screen with no tabs, I have to spell it right, screen has an E, screen, no tabs, a property of those now are printing. And so printing is a Boolean, true or false. And so right now it's not printing, so it is not showing me the icon. So what we're going to do is we're just going to use the opposite of that. So go in front of it and put an exclamation point, right? That's called the not operator. So it just says, if it's false, make it true. If it's true, make it false. So we're getting the opposite. So since we're not printing, right? So screen, no tabs, printing is false. Well, if we get rid of the dot, ugh, or get rid of this guy. So right now it is uh, false. We want the opposite. So if we put the exclamation point out front, now that returns true. But if we hit preview and hit print now, what we're going to see is we don't get the icon, right? The print icon goes away. So that's how you're going to hide your print buttons and any other things, right? Like if I really want to print the screen, I probably don't want the little arrow, right? I, I want just the data. So as you start to think about crafting your, what printing is going to look like, keep in mind that you can control whether or not it's printing. Let's cancel out of that, close that. All the X's like confuse me. It's really complicated. Um, so there's that. So that's one way. The other way that you can do it, if you don't want to use screen, because this would be hard coded to this screen. If you want to use the same print button everywhere, what you would do is you can just say parent dot printing. And so that works. And so that should give us the same behavior. So if we hit play and then hit print, it should disappear. Okay. So that works. Now what I found curious though, and I'm going to report this as a bug as soon as I get a chance is that there's another property called uh, app dot active screen dot printing. So it's there, right? And this is just a way to like reference the current, the app's current active screen. But if we do this and put the little icon in front of it and hit play and hit print, we still see this. So act app dot active screen dot printing doesn't work for some reason. I don't know why I'll report the bug eventually, but I just want to point that out to you guys. That was the first one I tried. I was really annoyed. <laughs> uh, so here, what you're just going to probably do, I would just try to use parent. Now, keep in mind, though, parent's not going to work if you're doing like nested containers for like responsive designs and stuff. So think it through a little. All right. So that was another big piece of this. Um, now, it also is worth noting if we go in here and if, like, if we scroll down, you know, down here to Chewy and Allison and uh, Fausto and all these people, we're also going to see that it does represent that. Okay, so this works. It does what you want, but I don't think this does exactly what you want because in reality, all you were trying to do is print out this record and you want it to look like data. So what I am probably going to do in scenarios like this, I'm going to say let's make a new screen. And if you look, there's actually new screens down here. There's a portrait print and a landscape print. So they gave us two new screen types. And the idea is that they are sized to... Um, a4 paper, either in portrait or landscape. Yeah, kind of fun. So let's just say we're going to do a landscape. Yeah, let's do landscape. We're going to do that for a long time. So we'll create a screen from that. And if you just go over here, you can see that the screen is automatically sized to 794 high by 1123. And it has a little print. It calls it a print button, but it's actually a print label up here that just kind of has that print stuff built into it. All right, so let's, we'll use it for the moment. So what I would then do is go back over here all I really wanted was this form, right? So I'm going to click on form one and I'm going to hold down control C, right? For copy, go to screen one. I'm going to paste that over here. And so then now I'm just going to kind of resize this thing and take up the whole screen. And I'm going to change it from a two column layout to a four column layout. All right, that's looking better. 
And then I'd probably look at this and go, wait a minute, this is actually showing me in um, a format where it's, you know, a bunch of stuff, right? Like if we hit play and then we hit print. So we still see it looks like drop downs and controls like this. Now, another bonus tip here that I was running into. Some of you, the first time you do this, you might find out that this is what your thing looks like. You're like, wait a minute, where's my drop downs? Where are those pieces? Why doesn't want to see Nicola's face? This frustrated me for several minutes also. Well, what it is, is it's just, I mean, you saw me uncheck it, so you know, but down here on some of the browsers, you're gonna see option, options, background graphics. So I had to turn this on the first time, and now that's been saved in my browser, now it just is always there. But that setting is why you may or may not be seeing images or some of the color things that you're expecting, like backgrounds and icons and stuff, okay? But this is actually not what we wanna see anyway. So let's cancel out of here, because now I'm gonna tweak this thing a little more, and what I'll probably do is, you know, if we're using a form control, this is super easy because I'm just gonna say, hey, default mode is view. Remember that most of your input controls, drop downs, text inputs, combo boxes, date pickers, they all are automatically set that when they're in view mode, they lose their little controls for clicking on them. Not disabled mode, but view mode. And so now this looks a lot more like what we'd wanna print. And now if we say play and hit the print, that's what we want, right? You probably want to clean this up some more. You might be like, hey, these, this note down here, the field kind of overrunneth. All right, well, that's no big deal, right? What do we do? We click on it, we kind of make it bigger. And we'll say, hey, for notes, we want to change the mode. There you go, mode to multi-line. And there you go. And you can actually see it's got a bunch of BRs, right? Which are uh, HTML. So it might even change it out to an HTML text box. I'm not going to do all that right now. But what I wanted you to do was start to think about as you're bringing these over, you know, you're gonna have to manipulate a little bit. Forms, in this case, right, we all know I hate forms, but forms are kind of easy. Um, but you might start to, you know, if you have individual controls, you should be able to arrange them, make that pixel perfect design you want. The other thing that I might wanna do is after they get done printing, is send them back to where we came from. No big deal. So just say A on select, after you do a print, you do a semicolon. And then for, after a semicolon, what are you going to do? You're going to say uh, navigate. I misspelled that in practice also. Screen with no tabs. And so then you should get the behavior you want that after you hit print. And we'll just say save as PDF. There you go. It's like, where do you want to save me? Save it there. Yeah, replace it. Now notice also here the file name just defaults to whatever the browser says. Um, so you might have to educate your users, right? There's Because once again, there's no way to pass the default browser name or a file name. So you're going to have to like educate people to, you know, put a, a meaningful file name here if they're going to save as PDF. So we're just going to oversave my previous one. And then once the save was done, it navigated over. And then now I know that for this button, instead of the whole, um, well, we'll just make the visibles true. I don't care about that. But what you might do here then is just say, hey, when they select this, instead of printing, we want to navigate to, we named it screen one, become very creative, like that. And so then now we would do this. Oh, yep, that looks the way I want to print it. We print, we save, we'll add a one to the end of the file name so we don't have to overwrite this time. And so then there that is, and it brings us right back. And of course we could open this, I never did before. Yay! Okay, so that's, that's where we're kind of at with thinking about this printing stuff. Um, you know, Microsoft, I'm certain, has more plans for this. They, they want to do more, make it more awesome. Um, but for right now, this is what we have. So let's enjoy what we have. Because this has been a court request, right? I've had people say, hey, Shane, how do I get a screenshot? Like, maybe you have the customer sign the contract. And you want to grab the, you know, you want to send them literally what they saw and sent. You could now start to do those type of things. Um, other things we might look at here. So... You know, like if we went back over here, uh, and earlier I showed you kind of what this looked like, and when I hit print, like we got this real glamorous looking version. In reality, if I was going to do this, I would probably want to, you know, A, I'd probably hide these little, you know, month changers. I'd hide all these icons. But the other thing that I would probably do here is I'd get rid of the screen background, right? I could make it just a plain white background. So I would kind of tailor the experience a little bit. And remember, you can just do all of that with conditionals, right? Like if we wanted to say, all right, let's get rid of the um, the screen fill, right? So we know that the screen, um, there's a rectangle here. That's kind of what's doing my gray. So I'd say you're visible. 
And then we just start to do our little formula. Or, oh, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna be real fancy. Go up here to the icon. So this is, we're gonna change this, we're gonna rename this to icon print. And now all the things that I wanna hide, so like rectangle, I'm gonna say your visible is just going to be icon print dot visible. So if the icon printer visible, then that would be visible. We'll copy that. And then we know that my screen, the other way that it works is it has a um, background image. So if we go back here, there's a background image. And so right now it's set to engine, blah, 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 blah. I could just say something like if that, then do that. And if not, just don't do anything. So if icon print is visible, then you make this the background. If it's false, then there just won't be a background image. So now if we say play, we press print, you know, so we're getting, we're getting close, right? I would just kind of continue to tune that, but you get the idea of how I could, you know, make it so that one screen kind of behaved differently, um, you know, based on what it was. Yeah, you know, we have the new screen types. These, they don't have any magic in them. They have that little screen button label that automatically does printing for you. And they're just pre-sized to the, the dimensions of the paper but you might want to kind of tweak and play with those a little bit along the way to, you know, get those to be what you want them if you needed to. So you would only, you're not getting anything special out of them other than they're just preset to the size. And when you drag controls on there, the controls try to fill the sizes um, out. So that is what those two do for you there. Uh, what else did I want to make sure you guys knew? I think that was all of the little tips and tidbits on there. So the other thing we should talk about you know, we here at Power Apps 911, we build a lot of PDFs for customers. Like I've spent a hundred hours in the last year easily building very complex PDFs. And a lot of those PDFs are multi-pages. They're like scrolling tables of data, things like that. This is not going to replace that. Keep in mind, you know, if I wanted to have, uh, remember on this app, like we were scrolling through this. If I wanted to have the user print everything in that table, they'd have to like have a view of everything in that table. Like it all have to be on the screen. So, so when you think about print, just think of it as print screen. You're print screening what they see, which is great, but you're going to have to kind of work through that a little bit and make sure that, you know, you're getting what you want out of the experience. So I don't think this is going to be the be all end all for everyone, but I think it's a giant step in the right direction. And I just think you have to you have to think about it, right? Back to like we just showed you a minute ago, tailoring your experience, doing the things you need to do there. All right, so that's what I've got for printing this week. If you have any questions, comments, leave them below. I am way behind. I had the audacity to go on vacation, right? So that's why I'm down here on Easter, boo, working, so that I can get a little caught up before uh, I return to vacate from vacation, either tomorrow or Tuesday. I haven't decided yet. Shh. Um, yeah, if you have any questions, comments, like I said, just leave those. Also keep in mind, you know, we've got a bunch of stuff coming up. I've got some uh, live training classes coming up. So go check out training.powerapps911.com. You can download this app. You can take our on-demand training, our live training classes. I got lots of training stuff. Yeah. And so with that, I'm going to say thanks and have a great day. Before you go, be sure to click on the subscribe button over here. So that way you'll be notified when new videos come out. If you need any help or you want to work together, whether your problem's big or small, check us out at Power Apps 911. We do it all. I rhymed. Or if you're looking for more formal training offerings, we have those linked up here somewhere. So check them out. Thanks and have a great day.